G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and in this video I'm going to show you what happens when you use mulch in the garden by checking out several examples in our veggie garden and around fruit trees. But not only that, we'll also check out the poor man's method of making mulch and I'll show you different types of mulch such as sugarcane, wood chip, cardboard, leaves and twigs, grass clippings and general garden waste. Let's get into it. I'm mulching around these young tomato plants in this whole long raised bed with some sugarcane mulch. I grew these plants directly from seed and now that they're thinned out and big enough, I can help them grow even better by mulching them well. You can mulch right up to the stem with tomatoes, but that's not the same for all plants. And I'll chat more about that later. Here in Australia, we're mad keen mulches. And for good reason, because our harsh climate can quickly suck the moisture out of the ground. Most vegetables don't have a very deep root system, perhaps 30 centimetres or less than a foot at most. And this can be a problem during hot weather or large fluctuations in temperatures with sudden water loss or direct heat on feeder roots close to the surface, stressing the plants out. And stressed out veggies don't taste very good. These sugarcane bales, they're a byproduct from the sugarcane industry and they're really popular here in Australia. They don't contain any weeds, they're natural, organic, and one bale goes a heck of a long way in the garden. But helping to reduce water loss is only one of the benefits, mulch or, mul what's the plural? Mul mulches? Mulches offer in the garden. Here are some others. Mulch can help insulate the soil from cold as well. We're coming into our subtropical winter and I'm hoping to grow a ton of tomatoes, which are typically a sun loving plant. So mulching around the base helps keep our tomatoes tootsies, their roots nice and cozy on those cold winter nights. Mulch helps to encourage and create a better environment for worms, microbes and beneficial fungi like mycorrhizal which in turn helps the plants grow healthier. Mulch helps to prevent soil borne diseases. What it does, it creates a barrier between the foliage of the plant and also sometimes the fruit, between it and the soil where a lot of those types of diseases harbor and stay and wait until a bit of foliage or fruit drops onto the soil or lays on the soil and then that's how the disease gets onto the plant, penetrates and takes over. So if you have a certain plant that is susceptible to foliage fungal disease or fruit rot like tomatoes and strawberries, mulching can help. What if I told you there is an easy way to drastically reduce weeds in the garden? That's right, mulch. A good thick mulch suppresses and smothers weed seedlings. Less weeds means less work and your crops don't have to compete for nutrients and water. Permeability, that's just a fancy word I use to act like I'm smarter than I actually am. In fact, it's a shorter way to say mulch makes it easier for water to penetrate the soil and get to the plant's root system instead of running off somewhere else. Without mulch, often the surface will dry out and form a crust, making it harder for standard rain or watering to get through where it's needed. Nutrients, just like compost. Did you know that, speaking of compost, it's World Compost Week? This is the last day and it's fitting because adding mulch on top of your garden is like direct composting on top of a garden bed. There's a common misconception that mulch like wood chip takes nitrogen away from the plants as it breaks down, but I've never seen evidence of that. Mulch first does its job doing all those other things I mentioned and then as a secondary, as it breaks down, it adds nutrients back into the garden. You can even go one step further and reuse litter from poultry pens such as chickens or ducks as a fertilizer mulch. Or you can double down even more 
and grow your plants in it. I'll let you in on a secret. See how well these tomato plants are growing? Lush, green, healthy. Well, I didn't add any commercial fertilizer that we purchased from a store at all to this bed, nothing. In fact, these tomato plants are growing in a mixture of wood chip mulch and quail manure. And it's likely nothing else will need to be added at all to help these tomatoes grow and be productive throughout the whole season. How sweet is that? Speaking of sweet, this sweet potato bed behind me is going great guns. After the last harvest, I rejuvenated the bed by mulching it with a combination of fresh sweet potato vine that I'd pulled out previously during the harvesting and some new sugarcane mulch, along with some of the remaining cardboard that I'd used before the sweet potato crop to rest the bed. As you can see, this method works really well for sweet potato. And what happens is, the sweet potato mulch, or that fresh stuff that I chucked back in here, most of it rots down, and in the process, turns into plant food that the new plants use. And some of the vine that we've put back will actually set root, survive, and then thrive like it is now. But be careful, using fresh garden waste like this example, or grass clippings as a mulch, won't work for all crops and can burn or be too overpowering for some plants and fruit trees. Let me quickly describe the different stages of mulch. Number one, fresh or green. These are mulches that have recently been made or freshly cut, let's say under a month old. Apart from a few examples, sweet potato being one of them, planting into fresh mulch is not a good idea because the initial decomposition can be too strong for vegetables. And if you're gonna place it around trees, keep it about a foot away from the trunk to prevent the stem or feed a root burn. Number two, old mulches. Old mulch or mulches have been left to fully die off and mostly dry out. These are safe to use in the garden and around fruit trees. For most plants and fruit trees, I would mulch close to the stems, but still keep a gap to prevent collar rot. Tomatoes are an exception to this rule. And number three, decompose. And we talked about this earlier. Decomposed mulch is like chicken or quail manure mulch, their litter that has been broken down in the pen old manure, not fresh stuff. And this is almost like a compost or a soil and can be planted directly into or top dressed around. It makes a fantastic mulch cross fertilizer in the garden. And after a while, old mulch will eventually break down into decomposed mulch and then become absorbed into the bed or can be dug into the topsoil and then more new old mulch can be added. I'm just gonna keep mulching this bed if you don't mind. Got plenty to do today, like editing this video. So I wanna get this job done. Depth of mulch? Yeah, that's a good question. I like to mulch at least two to four inches deep. I think that's an adequate depth to prevent most weeds and grasses from coming through and give enough protection for the plants and do the job. Around trees, I like to go as thick as possible, sometimes a foot deep to keep out grasses and really insulate those feeder roots. I don't always keep the mulch up to all our trees all of the time, but I do eventually get to each one and I always mulch new trees to get them off to a good start. What are some types of mulch? Another good question. This is sugar cane, about $12 a bale. Sounds expensive, goes a long way though, and is excellent in the garden. Loosen, at least twice the cost of sugar cane, but has a higher nitrogen content when it breaks down. Straw or hay is like sugar cane and cheaper, but be careful of grass seed. Wood chip, it's cost effective, especially if you make your own, but does take longer to break down. Cardboard is great for layering, smothering, and good to repurpose cardboard instead of just taking it to the tip or recycling place. But it can take time to break down and it might look unsightly in the garden. Leaves and twigs, this is an excellent free mulch and we get a lot of that down the back in our treed area. But be aware of weed and grass seed. 
grass clippings. They're best used when older, but again, it's a good free mulch. Use cut grass that has not gone to seed and lemongrass, for example, is really good as a cut and come again edible grass that is also used as a mulch. And general garden waste. This can be a combination, a bit like grass clippings, of plants that you've ripped out of the garden, uh, non-weeds or weeds that haven't gone to seed, all sorts of things, uh, old fruit, even old sweet potato or rotten sweet potato tubers. And that brings me on to the poor man's method of making your own mulch. If you want to make a general garden waste mulch but you don't have a mulcher machine or a chipper, you can always use a push mower with a catcher. Yes, it takes a bit of energy and time to get the job done, but it is effective and no, it doesn't hurt your mower. By mowing over some of this garden waste and catching it, you'll be surprised at how much wonderful, rich, fertile mulch you can make and then place that into your garden and add heaps of value to the growth of future crops. I don't own a large mulcher, but if any company is watching that makes big mulches and you want to sponsor me, I'm all in. But for now, for any of the bigger stuff, we save it up and then I hire a machine for the day. And that's probably cheaper, to be honest, in the long run to do it this way. When not to mulch. Now, if you can hear a bit of a hum in the background, the knucklehead next door has just started his ride on mower up. So apologies for that. But there are very few times when I don't mulch, but this is one of them. When I'm growing garlic, I don't mulch the soil around the plants because I've found in our warmer, humid climate, garlic stems and bulbs can rot or go mushy. And I get better results when I don't mulch around these plants at all. And of course, I don't mulch over seeds that I've sown either. If I have got mulch around, I will make a gap in that mulch and then sow some seeds and let them grow up freely. Otherwise, you know what would happen. It'd be, you know, mulch is good, as I said, for suppressing weeds and it will suppress good plants too. And this is actually a really good example because you can see I'm mulching on either side just around the tomato plants and I've left the centre here bare. That's because I've already sowed some beetroot that will come up in the middle here and they're starting to pop out now. And if I threw mulch over that, boom, no good. Apart from that, I recommend you become a mad mulcher like me and many others because mulching will help your garden flourish. I guarantee it. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Mulchy mulchers thumbs up. And also subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Are you still here? Haven't you got some mulching to do? Come on, get out there, get into it.